What is up you guys, Shannon from Hold My Chromes here. Today we're just going to be talking about my recommendations for beginners, or fish for beginners basically. Um, but before we get into that, I want to clear something up real quick. The last video I did, um, the fish, the video about fish that get too big for small aquariums, I just want to clear up a little mistake I made. I had a slight slip of the tongue, this guy here. Um, see him there? Yeah, that guy. I refer to him as a majestic angel, he's not. He is a blue face angel. Uh, that was my bad. I was just talking away and for some reason majestic angel slipped out of my mouth and didn't even notice and I was meant to say blue face. So yes, I'm just wanted to clear that up for you guys. Um, they are out of the same genus as a majestic, so yeah, tomato tomato. But yeah, so we'll get straight into my recommendations for the first time fish keepers. Before we get into the video, I just wanted to show you guys something real quick. If you may remember on uh, one of my other previous videos when I did a tour of the new shop, I showed you that one of my planter displays wasn't looking so well after the move, it just kind of went downhill. Well, this is basically my planter display now. It's coming along a lot, a lot better, it's recovered quite well. I have changed quite a lot in it though. Uh, I've got new plants in there now, but yeah, I just thought I'd give you guys an update on that. Alright, so now we're going to move on to the actual video. Okay, so the first video, first fish, sorry, I want to talk about are the Neon Tetra. Now, Neon Tetras are a very popular tropical fish. They're the most commonly kept species. Um, very easy to keep. They get about two centimeters long. Um, they are a schooling fish, being a tetra, so you want to at least, at least get six to eight of them, if not more than that. But these guys do well in small aquariums if you only have say like a 20 or so litre aquarium and you just have, or a nano tank of some sort then yeah neon tetras are a great choice to go for they're a good fish to start up with if you just set a brand new tank up and you want to just put something cheap and tough in neons are the way to go okay another nice fish a lot of people quite like are the guppies now guppies come in a wide variety of colours. They again get about two to two and a half centimetres long. They're a very easy fish to breed if you want to get into breeding. Um, being a live bearer, all you have to do is you usually have a one male to three female sort of ratio with your guppies. And more than likely they'll just breed. They're very simple, easy to keep fish. They are a surface dweller. Uh, so they'll hang mostly around the top of the aquarium. They're not a schooling fish, so you can have one or you can have ten. It's completely up to you. And yeah, they are, again, quite an easy, cheap little fish to keep. They do like the salt level a little bit higher than some other tropicals. Most of your live bearers do like a slightly higher salt level. But other than that, they're a great fish to start with. Very colourful and inexpensive. So these guys here are Santa Claus Tetras. Now Santa Claus Tetras are a really nice Tetra, I personally quite like them. They're a medium sized Tetra so they get about 3 centimeters max. So a reasonable size for a Tetra. Being a Tetra they are a schooling fish as well so you want to get at least, at least 4. Um, they're out of the same family as Serpe Tetras and Black Phantom Tetras. They're just a more fancy version if you will. But yes, they're a non-aggressive, medium-sized tetra that hangs usually around the middle sort of area of the tank. They don't usually go around the top too often. They do well in medium-sized tanks to large-sized tanks. I wouldn't put them in a nano tank because they do get a little bit too big for a nano tank once they're fully grown. But when they're little like these guys, they do look very nice. Okay, my next fish on this list are the rummy nose tetras. Now. I wouldn't say rummy nose are the first fish you'd want to add. They're certainly not the easiest to keep. I mean, there's, beginners are still able to keep rummy nose, no problem. But I just wouldn't make them the first fish you put in your tank. I mean, once you've had your tank set up and running for a little while and you've got fish in there already and it's fairly established and you've kind of got your head around fish keeping a bit better, you've got a better idea of how everything works with your tank, then by all means, go for rummy nose. Um, they're a really good schooling fish, as you can see. 
they school quite uniformed. I mean, they're, they're quite an organised school. I mean, compared to, say, Neons, Neons kind of just cluster together, but they're all kind of going in their own direction. Raminos will actually swim very uniformed, you know, and organised together. They do hang mid to bottom, so, yeah, you want one of the schooling fish that covers that area of the aquarium, go for rummy nose. They get about two and a half centimetres in you know, max size, so reasonable size tetra. Um, you'd want a group of at least eight plus rummy nose. But yes, as I said, I wouldn't make them the first fish you get because they're on a little bit on the delicate side as all. Well. But in an established tank, they do quite well. Okay, the next fish is a bristlenose. Now, bristlenose are quite a nice little cleaner to have in your tank. You do need a cleanup crew, uh, meaning scavengers and algae eaters. So, the bristlenose are quite a good algae eater. Um, they do get large, so you want to make sure your tank is big enough to accommodate them long term. They get up to 25 centimeters. But you can have them in small tanks when you get them at this size. You just have to either upgrade your tank when they get bigger or trade them in for smaller ones again. Um, so yes, they're quite good for cleaning algae off your glass and off your rocks. Be careful with bristlenose in planted aquariums if you're doing that because they can eat through plant leaves. Their um, suction mouth is actually quite rough and it can kind of sandpaper its way through thinner plant leaves. So you just want to bear that in mind. Other than that, they're quite an easy little fish to keep and they make quite a good algae eater in a tank. Okay, so next fish on the list are rasporas. I'm just going to say rasporas because there's a few different types. Um, these ones are raspora hingali. There's also raspora espe and harlequin rasporas. They're the three main ones you see in most shops that are most commonly kept. And they're quite easy to keep. So they get about a centimetre to a centimetre and a half long. They do get quite a nice orange colour depending on what type of raspora you have. They're a fantastic schooling fish. Non-aggressive, very easy to keep. They usually hang around the mid to surface sort of area of your tank. They'll get along with most fish, no problem. They're just not aggressive at all. And these guys do quite well in small aquariums as well as large ones. They're great to go in planter tanks. They're completely plant safe. And they're also shrimp safe. So if you're keeping shrimps, you can have rasporas. Okay, so the next fish on my list is the molly. Now mollies come in a wide variety of colours. These ones are black mollies and white mollies. But they come in orange, they come in white, they come in orange and black, orange and white. Sailfin mollies, mini mollies, balloon mollies, all different species of different colours. Mollies are live bearers just like guppies are. They get a fair bit bigger. Your mini mollies can get about two to three centimetres. Your sailfin mollies can get up to an inch and a half long. So they get quite large. But, yes, yeah, so being a live area like a guppy, very easy to breed. You have one male to every three or four females. Again, like a guppy, they do like the higher salt level. But they're a non-aggressive fish. They go great in most community tanks, no problem. They're very easy to keep. And a little known fact about the molly, especially the black molly, they will actually eat black beard algae, which a lot of people don't realize mollies eat algae, but they will eat black beard algae. And it's actually quite a interesting fact to know because most fish won't eat blackbeard algae and you have to medicate for it. So mollies are a solution to that. So the next fish is the angelfish. While yes, angels do get to a reasonable size, so you can't really have them in a tank that's too small, anything under 60 litres is not recommended for an angelfish. They're a very hardy, resilient fish. They're very easy to keep. They're not fussy feeders. They get along with most medium to large sized tropical fish. They don't technically school, but you can have an angelfish with, you can have a group of angelfish if you'd like to. That's no problem. And yes, they come in a wide variety of colors. And angelfish, you can get them small. They look quite nice when they're little, but you just have to bear in mind, yes, they will get a fair bit bigger. They get you know, about eight to nine centimeters in length. And they can eat small fish, like for example, they can eat neon tetras at their, when they're at their larger size. So you want to bear that in mind when buying an angelfish. Okay, another one of my favorite larger species of tetra are the Congo tetra. Congo tetras are actually one of the largest species of tetras you can get. 
fully grown they get about eight centimeters the males get really beautiful fins on them they get really nice long fins with nice colors nice rainbow iridescence down the body they're non-aggressive they do great in the school if you have a tank that's 60 liters or more they're a great addition they do hang middle to top water level so if you want something large that schools around the top to middle of your tank go for congos great addition to any aquarium okay so we're going back to the cleanup group this is actually one of my two favorite fish to have as a cleanup the gold sucker or the chinese sucker um, so the gold sucking catfish uh, they're just very voracious algae eaters while bristlenose do eat algae, gold suckers I find they're just much more faster at eating, they're much more voracious feeders, so they just get the job done much faster and much better than bristlenose. And they don't damage your plant leaves like bristlenose do, they're much more delicate, so if you have a planted tank and you need a, a cleaner, go for a gold sucking catfish. So gouramis are another nice addition, there's lots of different species, these ones are blue gouramis, um, but there's all different types of gouramis you can get and they all come in different colours and sizes. There's also dwarf gouramis, which only get about 5 centimetres. These blues do get about 10 centimetres fully grown. Not overly aggressive fish. I mean, blue gouramis and all of the other larger gourami species you can have in a tank that's 60 litres and upward. They don't school, so there's no need to get a school if you don't want to. But if you want to have a few of them together, that's no problem either. Other than that, they don't have any special requirements, just your standard tropical sort of setup, 24 to 26 degree water, neutral pH, and yeah, they do quite well. Some gouramis will nip at plants though, so just bear that in mind if you're going to have them in a planted aquarium. Okay, so swordtails are another live bearer out of the same family as your mollies and your guppies, so basically the exact same requirements as I just went through with them. Um, so yeah, they're another great fish, another option. Um, the difference is between these guys and your mollies, the males have that extension on the, set, on the tail that you can see there, hence the name sword tail. The females, they don't have it and they've got a slightly fatter body. Like the mollies, they come in a wide variety of colours. These ones are black swords, but you can get them in bright orange, orange with a black tail. You can get koi swords, which, swords which are orange and white. So, yeah, and they're kind of a medium-sized live bearer. They don't quite get quite as large as the mollies, but they still get around the three to four centimeter mark, depending what type of sword tail you have. So mountain clouds or white clouds are another nice option. They're a fairly inexpensive fish, and they're extremely hardy. These guys can actually go in both warm and cold water, so they're very resilient fish. They are a schooling fish, so they'll hang around the mid to top area of the tank. And the males do get quite nice red tails and nice markings on their fins they look a fair bit more attractive than the females and if you get a few males and a few females the males will actually show off to the females and start flaring their fins so it's quite fun to watch but yes they only get a couple of centimeters long and they're a fairly hardy fish and great for anyone as a first fish to add to your aquarium okay so you heard me mention out of the gold from the gold when i was talking about the gold sucker that that's one of my two favorite algae eaters this is the second one the Siamese algae eater. One of these and a gold sucker are a great combo to go in any tank for a cleanup crew. The reason I say that, gold sucker's got a big suction mouth. He can do all the big flat areas like your glass and large flat rocks and stuff like that and all the large plant leaves. Siamese algae eaters have a very little, small, nimble mouth. It's not a sucking mouth, it's a nibbling sort of a mouth. But what they'll do, they'll nibble between all the tiny little plant leaves, all the little delicate plants that the gold sucker's mouth just can't get around. So between one of these and a gold sucker, they do a great job covering algae in your tank, as far as the cleanup crew goes. The only um, drawback to Siamese algae eaters is they're only good cleaners when they're small. Once they get past that four to five centimeter mark, they get lazy, they stop eating algae and they just eat fish food. So Siamese algae eaters are only really useful cleaners when they're small. But other than that, they're a number one cleanup fish. Okay, so now we're going to talk about scavengers. And Corydoras do a fantastic job at scavenging. They're only a fairly small catfish. They get about two centimeters to three centimeters maximum. They're non-aggressive. And yeah, as a bonus, they do stay small. So they're great in small aquariums as well as large ones. Being a catfish, they're strictly carnivorous, so they'll pick up scraps off the bottom. They do have one little drawback, is you can't have fairly large um, granules of gravel in your tank because it does actually break off their whiskers when they're shuffling around in that type of gravel. 
Most catfish do prefer to have sand opposed to gravel. It's just much more gentle on their mouth and it doesn't hurt their whiskers. But other than that, they're a great scavenging fish and they're non-aggressive. There are many different types with different colors. These particular ones are peppered quarries, but yes, there's a whole range of corridors you can choose from. Okay, so the last live bearer I'm gonna talk about is the platy. I'm not gonna go into too much details because they're very much the same sort of care as the guppies, mollies, and swordtails. They're again, a medium-sized live bearer like the swordtails, they don't get too big. And again, they come in a wide variety of colors, very similar to that of the swordtail and the platy. I mean, sorry, the swordtail and the molly, they come in very much the same sort of colors. But yeah, they're a great addition to any person starting out with a fish tank brand new and they don't know 100% what sort of fish to add, I'd go with platys. They're a non-aggressive, uh, wonderful little fish to have. Okay, the next fish on the list is a clown loach. Now, while clown loaches do get very big, Please keep in mind, yes, they do get large. So if you have a large aquarium, by all means, go clown loaches. They're another great scavenging fish. They're carnivorous. They're actually a really good solution if you have a snail problem. So if you want to keep, if you actually purposely want to keep snails, don't get a clown loach or any sort of a loach because they will eat the snails. But if you have a snail outbreak of those little pest um, cone snails that you see around, they just breed like crazy and they take over your tank. Clown loaches are a good solution. They are a specialist snail eaters. But as you can see, they're a great schooling fish. They like to cluster together, so you must do need to get a few of them if you want to get loaches. A single loach on his own will just hide, he won't come out. But if you have a group like this, they'll quite happily come out and display themselves. But yes, they do get large, so bear that in mind. Loaches do like a slightly higher temperature, around 26 to 27 as opposed to 24, 25. But other than that, they're a great fish to have, they're non-aggressive, and they look wonderful. Okay, so that was uh, my list of tropical species and freshwater species. Um, but now we're going to move on to marines. So, for those of you setting up a marine tank, and it's your first marine tank, you've been keeping freshwater for a while, you've got that experience under your belt, and you want to move on to something a little bit more advanced, and thought, hey, I'll go salt water. Well, I'm going to list a few marine fish that are good starters because some marine fish are extremely hard to keep even for the experienced hobbyists it's, they still come with a whole host of problems and yeah they're just a, a headache in general in a lot of setups so I'm going to list a few marine fish for you guys as well okay so the first fish on my marine list are the Clark clowns Clark clowns are a larger species of clown they get about 10 centimeters fully grown but they're quite an attractive little clownfish. They'll, they're not a fussy clownfish when it comes to going in and enemies. Some species of clown are very fussy. Clark clowns are found are not a fussy species. Clownfish being out of the same family as damsels, they're fairly hardy fish. Um, and yeah, like when you first set your marine tank up, they're a good first fish to put in as kind of the test fish as well, because um, they're not too expensive. I mean, as far as marine fish go, they're not too pricey, but they're a fairly resilient fish. So coral beauties are another nice little angel. If you like dwarf angels, coral beauties are quite nice. They only get about 10 centimeters fully grown. Not an overly aggressive dwarf angel either, but I've just generally found they're quite hardy. Um, they're not overly prone to problems like white spot, for example. A lot of marine fish are prone to white spot. Coral beauties rarely get white spot if they're in a, you know, a tank that's well maintained. But yes, bearing in mind, if you're going to go dwarf angels, try to just stick to the one because usually two dwarf angels will fight. So you can usually have one dwarf angel with one large species of angel, like for example, an emperor or a majestic or a blue face or a Korean angel. You can have one of those with a dwarf angel, no problem. It's just when you put two dwarfs together, more often or not, they'll fight. But back to my original point, these are great little fish to put in a marine tank, they're fairly hardy. If you're new to marines, I'd highly recommend a Coral Beauty. Okay, so Klein's butterflies are another easy to keep marine. Um, being butterflies, they do like to, they can school. I mean, we keep our Klein's butterflies here on their own and they seem to do quite well, but you can get a school of butterflies and yeah, they will school. Um, bearing in mind, some butterflies can be finicky feeders, but the clients we found, they're the only butterfly we like to stock consistently because we never have trouble getting them to feed. Um, 
they're non-aggressive, they're not overly prone to white spot and other problems. They can pick at some soft corals, so uh, they're not the best thing to put into a reef tank, especially if you have a lot of morphs and zoos, but other than that, quite a nice fish. They will actually eat Aptasia anemones too, so if you have an Aptasia problem and you don't have any corals in your tank, go for a Klein's butterfly, he'll solve your problem. Next fish on the list is the fox face. Fox face are a wonderful fish, they're not aggressive at all. Um, and most fish generally don't bother them either because they actually have venomous dorsal spines. If you get spiked by a fox face, it's extremely painful. Most fish know that and leave them alone. So it's kind of a plus there, nothing picks on them and they don't pick on anything else. They do get large, so you want to have a large aquarium for them. They get up to a foot long. But other than that, they're again, not prone to many problems. They get on quite well with virtually any other fish in your tank. And they're an algae eater, so they'll actually help keep your rocks clean of um, green algae. They eat it, much like tangs do. You can see he's demonstrating his spikes there. Um, they can school if you get a group of them, but most fox face are found are quite happy on their own. Okay, so the next fish is the blue damsel. Or well, this particular one's the yellow tail blue damsel. There's also the yellow belly blue damsel. These are probably the cheapest and toughest marine fish you could possibly get. Um, yeah, they're about as cheap as marines get and they're also about as tough as marines get. So they're a great fish to add in straight away if you've just set the tank up and you're not too sure of how it's going, throw a damsel in, see how it goes. But, as you can see, they are a little on the aggressive side. Um, so with damsels, it's either you have a big school or you have one. Three or four isn't going to cut it, they're just going to bully each other. That being said, again, they're very hot, very hardy fish and a good test fish to throw into your tank. Okay, another great fish is this guy, the cleaner wrasse. Now, cleaner wrasse, hence their name, they are a cleaner, but they're a cleaner of parasites off your fish's body. What they'll do, they'll just go from fish to fish in the aquarium, checking them over for parasites, and if fish has any parasites, they will eat the parasites straight off the fish. Most fish recognize these as a cleaner and will actually approach them and kind of lie down in a way of saying clean me and the rush will then clean them. They're not the most long-lived fish though, though, that's the only downside to them. You're lucky if you get six to eight months out of them. Sometimes people have them for longer but generally they don't live quite long. Because in the wild their diet is sustained entirely of parasites. And if your fish and your tank are all parasite free, even though they are eating the fish food, uh, they're missing out on whatever nutritional value they seem to get from the parasites and they eventually just die. So as you can see there, he's just had a look at that Tang's head, trying to clean him. So yeah, very active cleaner. The yellow Tang is another fairly easy fish as far as Tangs go. A lot of Tangs are a bit on the delicate side, but as far as Tangs go, scope has Tangs, which is what a yellow Tang is. Um, they're much easier to care for. They don't get too huge, they get about 12 centimeters long. So you can keep them in a 150 liter aquarium minimum. It can be a little aggressive sometimes to certain fish. Uh, you can't put two scopaz tangs together, they'll just fight. Or even if you have other yellow colored fish that are a similar shape, sometimes the yellow tang might be a bit aggressive towards them. But again, we're not talking about aggression, we're talking about how easy they are to keep. And from my previous experience of yellow tangs, I haven't really had any issues with them regarding parasites or them having trouble feeding or anything like that. So yeah, quite a nice fish. Okay, so this is a lovely little reef fish. They only get about five, six centimeters. They do great in a school or in a pair. This is the Bangai Cardinal. Bangais are great actually. They're not aggressive at all fairly peaceful and you know fairly resilient reef fish they're coral safe as well they're fine to put with shrimps and invertebrates so all around they're quite good and they don't get too large not the most active swimmer they kind of just sit in one spot though but if you get a whole group of them they look quite nice like that and as you can see they have quite nice markings so the valentini puffer these guys are practically bulletproof i've had so many valentini puffers in the past They've survived through white spot outbreaks and everything and all sorts of problems. Mind you, I've never actually seen one get white spot, 
but I've had them survive in tanks that have had white spot issues and I've had tanks crash and the Valentini Puffer was the only ones that survived. They do come with some drawbacks though. Uh, they will eat invertebrates and they will eat corals. So you have to have them in a fish only tank. Also being a puffer, they are poisonous, um, which that's their defense. So most fish know not to bother them because they're poisonous, but the, the only reason that's really a problem is if one happens to die in your aquarium and you don't notice it's dead, and it's been in, that, in your aquarium dead for a while, the poison can seep out of their body into the water depending on how big the puffer is and how small your tank is and the volume of water um, it can poison the fish in your tank that aside they're quite great um, I've never had that happen to be honest because like I said I've never had one really die on me so yeah if you have a fish only aquarium um, and you're not planning on getting any corals or invertebrates go for a Valentini puffer Biocolor angels are another nice dwarf. Um, again, being a dwarf, you can't put them with another dwarf. Like before, I was just talking about the coral beauty. I wouldn't put a biocolor with a coral beauty on their own or with a large species of angel. They're fine. They get on fine with all the other marine fish. They get about 10 centimeters long. And as you can see, they're quite attractive little angels. Reef safe, invertebrate safe, pretty non-aggressive and pretty easy to keep as far as angels go. A lot of the larger angels tend to be a little more prone to some problems occasionally, but yeah, this is one of the dwarfs that, um, yeah. again, we have minimal problems with them here in the shop, and yeah, I recommend them to everybody. Okay, another type of Scopaz tang that I'm going to add to this list is the sailfin tang. Now, sailfins get quite large. They get about the size of a small, well, like a medium-sized dinner plate. They get quite big. So yes, again, you do need a large tank, but that aside, as far as scope as go, they're probably the least aggressive and probably the most resilient. I've had many sailfins and I've never really had them get wipe spot or any issues like that. Uh, they're completely reef safe and invertebrate safe. There's a couple of types. This is your normal sailfin tang and there's also a Red Sea sailfin tang, which has really nice markings on it. I don't have one I can show you right now. You just have to take my word for it. They look great, but yeah. Just generally scope as tangs are probably one of the more resilient type of tangs, but sailfin does get the largest, but the sailfin is probably the least aggressive. Fire gobies, they're a fantastic goby as well. Like a lot of gobies get large, fire gobies only get about four centimeters long. As you can see, you get a pair of them, they stick together all the time. They're not a sand sifting goby like your gold head sleeper gobies or your barred gobies, so they kind of just hang mid to bottom level of your tank and they sit together. Great reef fish and invertebrate safe, completely non-aggressive. They are quite good jumpers so they're not really recommended for open top tanks. Okay another great uh, cleanup crew to have is a blenny. There are many different types of blennies. There's bicolor blennies and eyelash blennies and widow blennies and carpet blennies. Blennies are algae eaters, so they do quite an important job in your tank by keeping your rocks free of algae. So a blenny is highly recommended for literally any marine setup. Um, some blennies only get about 10 centimeters, some get 20. It just depends on the type of blenny you have. They're very resilient fish. Um, they can live in most setups, no problem. They can live in like a fish only tank with the salt levels a bit lower, or they can live in a reef tank with the salt levels a bit higher. But with blennies, they are a bit aggressive towards each other. I mean, there's a couple of species that you can have in a group, like for example, your peacock blennies and your crested blennies, they can go in groups together. But most blennies are solitary and they're very territorial towards other blennies, so you only want to have the one. But other than that, um, they're a must for any tank, if not for just a nice looking fish, because some blennies are quite nice looking. Uh, they just do an important job in your tank, so they're good to have regardless of whether they look pretty or not. Okay, a lot of people probably recognize this guy. This is a dotty back. This is a bicolor dotty back or a royal dotty back. Uh, there's all different types. There's also, a, there's also strawberry dotty backs and skunk dotty backs um, and orchid dotty backs. The bicolor is probably the most commonly kept and probably the most easy to keep as well. They only get about three centimeters long. Um, they're fine in a reef tank. They won't hurt your invertebrates or corals. They do have a bit of a temperament. Um, they're the sort of fish that they're not overly aggressive in themselves, but if something hassles them, they can look after themselves quite well. 
I will say if you do want to keep damsels, put the damsel in the same time you put the dotty back in, don't get one first. Damsels and dotty backs always seem to clash with each other, unless you get them at the same time. Other than that, they're fine with most other marine fish, and they can do quite well in large aquariums as nanos. Okay, now we're going to be talking predators. Now let's say um, you've set up quite a large marine tank, something 300 litres plus. All the pretty little reef fish, they just don't do it for you. You're not going to have corals or shrimps or invertebrates and anything like that. Let's say you want big predatory, predatory fish. A good one to start out with is a harlequin tusk. Harlequin tusks are actually a type of ras. As you can see there, he's got quite sharp teeth in his mouth, so he is a predatory ras. But, even though he's a predator, he's not aggressive. A lot of people can't tell the difference between this. There's a big difference between aggression and a predatory response. Being predatory just means it eats other small fish when it's hungry. Aggression has nothing to do with the fish eating. It's just basically being territorial and attacking other fish, but it doesn't want to eat them. So this guy is not territorial in any way, so he's not aggressive. He's just predatory. So obviously you can't keep him with anything too small because he will eat it. You keep him with fish around the same size as him. Um, yeah, harlequin tusks will leave other fish alone. They're not aggressive at all. They're pretty easy as far as wrasse go. I mean, they're just like any other wrasse. They're not too hard to keep. They get about a foot long, fully grown. So yes, if you want a large predator fish that's not too hard to keep, harlequin tusk. They're probably one of my favourites, actually. And while we're on the subject of predators, the lionfish is another easy to keep predator. Same as the harlequin tusk, not aggressive, just predatory. So he does have quite a large mouth, so you've got to make sure you don't have any fish that'll fit in that. Other than that, I have actually never seen a lionfish with white spot, so yeah, they're pretty resilient. I have found lionfish don't like copper. I've had many lionfish and in fish only tanks most people's go to medication is copper. Um, that's the whole point of a fish only tank, you can use copper because you don't have any corals or anything like that. But every time I dose copper with lionfish they tend to get a bit funny, they tend to get stress colours and they start gasping on the bottom so I don't think they like copper too much. So this particular lionfish is an Antonata lion, there's also your zebra lions and your volatan lions. Um, the volatans are probably the most commonly kept one, uh, they get the largest, they get up to a foot long plus. Antonata is probably about 20 centimetres. Antonatas are more body and less fin where your volatans have much bigger fins and a smaller body. Not the most active fish, they kind of just sit around on the rocks, the Antonatas, they don't swim around as much as volatans and zebra lions do. But yeah, if you, again, if you like big predators and you don't want something too finicky and delicate, lionfish are another good option. Okay, the third predator I'm going to list is the flagtail cod. And as you can see, he's like half hiding in there, so sorry about that. I can't get the best uh, view of him right now. Now, being a cod, he's going to get absolutely massive, so please bear that in mind when you get one. They're not the most... Um, well, they're not the greatest display fish because they're very shy, as you can see. They get scared when you come near the tank and hide. I mean, if you get them from small and you grow them up and you've had them for a long time, they do tame down, they will start coming out, and you can even get them to feed out of your hand. But when you get them brand new, especially if you know, they're only little, like this one, they will hide quite a lot. Um, but they're great feeders. They never refuse food, especially if it's live food. Um, they're not too delicate, they're not aggressive, again, like the lionfish, because the lionfish is technically out of the cod family. Um, they're just predatory, so they're not aggressive. And this particular cod, the flagtail, hence the name, his tail's got nice markings on it, you can't really see it because he's folded it down. But, um, yeah, they're a great little predator to have that'll hang around the bottom of your tank. So you've set up like a medium to small size tank and you want a nice little ras to go in there. Banana ras are great. We have banana ras in most of our displays and we sell heaps of them. They get about 10 centimeters fully grown. Um, not aggressive at all. They do great in a reef setup with corals and inverts. They are a burrowing ras, so if they're frightened they will burrow under the sand. Sometimes you'll put a banana ras in your tank and you won't see it for a few days. It's because it's just, just burrowed under the sand pretty much. Can jump, so you don't want to have them in an open top tank. 
But once they've settled, like this one is, as you can see, they're just out swimming around, being quite active. So really nice display fish, these guys. And yes, they're not too hard to keep either. So tomato clowns are another nice um, marine fish that aren't too hard to keep. They're actually fairly, fairly hardy fish. They get about eight to 10 centimeters fully grown, so they do get to a reasonable size. They'll quite happily go in most anemones. Um, the only downside to these guys can be a little aggressive, um, but it all depends on the fish. I've had tomato clowns that are aggressive and I've had tomato clowns that aren't aggressive. It just depends on the fish sometimes. If you're lucky enough to get a good pair of tomato clowns that aren't aggressive, uh, they're a great addition to a reef aquarium. Okay, so goldhead sleeper gobies. They're another great option if you want a sand sifter. Like I mentioned before, cleanup crew is always good. What these guys do is they sift sand. So, because over time you get uh, red cyanobacteria or you get a green algae, either one or both, growing on top of your sand. What these guys do, they're constantly sucking out mouthfuls of sand and turning it over, keeping the sand nice and white. So they're a great little goby to have. But when I, I shouldn't have said little goby, they get about 15 centimeters. So yeah, reasonable size. But if you get a pair of them like this, they'll sit together and display quite nicely. Uh, they get along with most marine fish, no problem. Okay, the last clownfish I'm gonna list is probably the most common one people know of. That's the Ocellaris clownfish. Now these are probably the most popular marine fish around. They're the most commonly kept. Everyone who has a marine tank has Ocellaris clownfish. They only get about six to seven centimeters fully grown, so not too huge. They're probably the least aggressive clownfish. They're not too fussy with anemones. Um, so they're great to go in reef tanks and they're great with invertebrates as well. There's two types you can choose from, tank bred and wild. Um, these ones are tank bred, you can tell that because as you can probably see, their white stripes are broken and this one's, they're missing some black in some areas too. They're just missing some stripes. Um, wild caught clowns don't have that deformity. Wild caught ones are more inclined, sorry, wild caught clowns are more likely to go in an enemies because uh, they were born in an enemy, they know what it is. Tank bred, they were raised in a tank, they've never seen an enemy before, so uh, there's less chance they're going to go in it. But if that's not that important to you, uh, there's really no difference as far as their care goes. They're very hardy fish, they're a great um, clownfish species to add to your tank as a first fish. They do well in pairs or in big schools. One thing I will just mention about clownfish in general, so all clowns, not just these guys, you either want to get a pair or a big group. You don't want to get three or four because um, two of them will pair off and kill the others. So generally you get two with clownfish. A trio doesn't work, the, the third wheel just gets killed by the other two. Okay, and one more fish I want to talk about. Now, this is a fish I do not recommend for a beginner. Now, I'm going to put this in here strictly because this is a marine fish that most people want to keep due to the movie Finding Nemo and Finding Dory everyone wants a blue tang when Finding Nemo came out everyone wanted a clownfish now Finding Dory's out everyone wants a blue tang and we deal with this almost on a daily basis um, to people setting up a marine tank brand new and they want a blue tang their kids want a blue tang because they've seen the movie these are not for beginners these are probably the hardest marine fish out of all marine fish to possibly keep. Uh, reason being, they stress so easily. And the problem with that is when a fish is stressed, its immune system goes down. When the immune system goes down, it gets white spot. Uh, blue tangs also don't have a slime coat, so they've got less protection from things like that as well. So they're just basically, they're prone to white spot more than almost any other marine fish that you keep in an aquarium. So for that, I do not recommend having a blue tang unless you're an experienced fish keeper and you've had marines before. And even then, I only recommend blue tangs in fish-only aquariums where you can dose with copper to combat white spot. Blue tang in a reef tank with reef-safe meds, which aren't quite as um, strong and concentrated as copper would be to combat white spot, it's extremely difficult to medicate because on top of the fact that the blue tang, if it gets white spot and you can't use as the strongest possible med like you would in a fish only tank, on top of that, this fish generally has a much weaker immune system. That plus no slime coat, 
its own body and immune system isn't going to be able to fight off white spot as well as, say, a clownfish can, for example. That plus the weak meds that you have to use in a coral tank, they're just not recommended. So, yes, I know I'm repeating myself, but... Yeah, we deal with this on a daily basis with people um, wanting a blue tang just because of the movie Finding Dory. And, yeah, it's, it's just not going to work for you unless you've had marines before and you're fairly experienced in the hobby. So for that reason, the blue tang is on this list for the one fish I do not recommend to anybody. Unless you're experienced. Well, that's it guys. That concludes my recommendations for fish that I'd recommend to start with. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope my video is helpful. Please like and subscribe my channel and I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.